Hi crew and welcome to this week's Hot Chocolate Chronicles and this week I have a few topics. First uh, I just wanted to talk about RPG games in general and uh, you know why I'm not really attracted to The Witcher 3 as well as give a few updates about the channel and whatnot. So yep uh, here it goes. Uh, the, here comes the break and our first drink of chocolate. Locked on target. Oh, wow. Alright, well this is a fun fact, the hot chocolate fact for the day. This is the first time my wife has made me the hot chocolate. Because she's home today because we have friends coming in uh, from upstate Michigan uh, down here. And, uh, for the weekend. And it tastes better. Go figure. So somehow my wife has made it better than me. Uh, that's, that's just how things go. So I make meats better than she does. She makes certain things, but how do you like get a hot chocolate packet better? I, I don't understand. But anyways, that's, that's, that's the story of my life. My wife just makes some things better than me. I make some things better than her. Uh, so it's just, it is what it is as far as our cooking in preparing circles go. Uh, but anyways, uh, just a my life update or whatever's um it's been a really crazy week uh crazy busy every day we've had an appointment to keep of some kind or my wife has had to be at a meeting or something random so i've had like zero time to record which you'll see on all the videos that i'm uploading now i shot yesterday and even now i have when i'm recording this i have an hour to uh, actually 48 minutes to shoot this get it up online, do the title, do the card, and do everything, um, edit, upload, and, uh, you know, do the description and everything before my friends get here from Michigan, uh, so I've had, like, zero time to do anything this week, uh, just because the stars aligned that we had every, we were busy every day where I had to watch Abigail, uh, but anyways, um, let's share another drink of chocolate or, you know, whatever beverage you have, because I understand it's summer, so a lot of you are not drinking hot chocolate right now, so, you know, pink lemonade or whatever else you guys are drinking, let's share it. All right. And the reason why I want to talk about RPGs in general is, um, one of the things that we're, I'm going to try to play with the group is my Star Wars Star Wars Age of Rebellion game. It's like D&D, &D, but in the Star Wars universe, uh, and it doesn't use, like, uh, crit rolls and whatever. It has a unique dice system where even if they miss the attack and they have enough advantage, it'll, I, can, I can, as the Dungeon Master, say, like, well, you miss hitting them, but you scarred their armor or you know like they they take uh, another disadvantage ro die roll um next turn try time they try to attack because your um, blast hit right like uh, blew their cover or you know what i mean like i could still turn a bad roll into something good if they have like i can manipulate the dice in a way as a dungeon master uh, and it's a very much more narrative focused game where uh, as D and D is more like here's this combat system roll and that's your stats you know what I mean like that's that's just what you get um, and the dungeon master does have liberties but in this game you have two basic symbols um, you know you got hit uh, well you got hit miss and uh, advantage or crit all right so if you get three crit symbols on a roll. And um, you get and you miss your attack completely to and totally, you know, um, I'm going to give you something, right? Um, so that allows me to say you didn't do any damage, you know, whatever. But that's, that's, that is one of the core reasons why I like it. That and it's Star Wars. I mean, uh, my gosh, uh, the, the, <laughs> the things, the stories I can tell and the stories that uh, that system allow me to tell are just crazy awesome. Uh, like uh, one of the starter, one of the campaigns that I made that I haven't been able to play yet is basically the campaign 
uh, of smuggling something special outside of the uh, influence of the uh, Empire. And let's just say it ends up being important uh, to the first movie, um, you know, Star Wars A New Hope. So, um, you know, you had a pretty heavy hand in doing something that um, is necessary to start that movie off, uh, which, you know, is not canon, don't get me wrong, but it's, it, it, like, that is super fun, and I'm glad I thought of it, and, uh, you know, like, I, I just, I love the idea of just being able to tell stories in, in the Star Wars universe. All right, so with the Witcher Three, we've been having this whole uh, like we have been having. I I don't know really know how to quantify this discussion because well okay I do but I don't like using the terms. Uh, with the Witcher Three, we've had a whole lot of hype. A whole lot of people are loving the game. A whole lot of people are. You know, reviewing it of uh, the best game ever, but I don't know. Like, and I'll take, I'll say this. Uh, I have played the first two Witcher games. Um, I would say about eighty percent through, and eighty percent for me is I've completed the main storyline. I and I've done a lot of the side quests. When I say I one hundred percent a game, I mean I hundred percent everything. Okay, so when I say I've played a game 80% through, that's chances are that means I've beat the game, quote-unquote, but um, I haven't, like, done all the side quests and whatnot. And from what I've seen, it's the game has been a devolution, or de-evolution from Witcher 2 to Witcher 3. Uh, the interface has gotten busier, the combat's gotten clunkier, uh, not, like... Uh, the AI is still something to be desired um, from enemies, and it's more of it's more of the Geralt. I, I'm trying to think of the actual correct pronunciation now. Uh, what when we say Geralt, it's actually the wrong way to say it. Uh, it comes from the that comes from the Chinese uh, translation of the game Geralt. Uh, I think it's like Geralt um, or something is what it is in its native tongue. Um, and I try to respect video game uh, or respect terminology um, rather than pulling from another culture's translation. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and do our own uh, translation. But um, I feel like the combat in that game says we're going to give you clunky sword controls and throw 50 enemies at me at you and that's your sense of difficulty okay and i saw this on jim sterling's live stream he had no problem going one and one one v one versus people it's just when they when they threw five or six enemies the controls were configured in a way that it just didn't work out to engage multiple enemies at once and of course you're probably like oh well you can spec into the multi-level spell type aura uh, well, yeah, I mean, but you only have 12 skill points from what I understand, and I might be wrong on that. I mean, um, but I would be going for shield just because, you know, there's no way you can control some beastie charging you off screen, okay? And I saw that happen three or four times on the other, on the, his stream too, is just he'll be doing our in combat and some mob will just off screen him and because there's no um like mini map we're telling where enemies are coming from he took damage uh quite substantial damage just because he uh forces beyond his control all right because he you can't like look away from your enemy to check the surroundings in a game like the witcher that's heavily single target combo based uh, and then half the battles are like multiple people thrown at you and i'm not saying like ooh no challenge but okay let's take a game like skyrim okay 
Skyrim, you only run across maybe three or four enemies at a time at most, okay? if you Unless you're in one of the story-based siege modes, but generally when you run up to a bandit's tower, you have two or three people running after you, okay? The combat is designed around that. That is the idea, okay? When I see the games like Witcher, okay, where it would work in Skyrim, but when you're regularly going against six to seven enemies that's kind of a turnoff to me especially when it's slow controls with no real impact with your weapons okay uh and that that's if i'm swinging a big huge hammer and it kills everything in two hits yeah i can have sluggish controls but when i'm swinging a rapier that does 10 percent damage to an enemy I want that to be boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Like, I want that to be, when I press the button, bam, that skill hits. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want this to go, huh, huh. you know, like, I, that's, that's garbage to me. Like, that's not satisfying. And that's, that's the big thing that I've seen from the gameplay is I just don't think I'd be satisfied. And tell you the truth, I'm not saying like, oh, I don't want stories or whatever. But just doing gamer life and listening to B uh, uh, quite a bit, our BC, my friend over at Alloy7, uh, he's made me realize that games are such a fledgling um, storytellers that they really don't tell stories well. I mean, some games do, don't get me wrong, but like the stories and everyone's praising The Witcher for having interesting side quests. And I'm like, that's a one-dimensional character that's having a one-dimensional problem, and the big thing that, that you know, is, is why you think it's good is because the results of the quest weren't what you were thinking. And what, what, where did that matter in the, in the world? Like, what impact did, did you doing the quest have in the world? Do people around the town look different? Why is it that you can clear four monsters out of the town and then people repopulate it? You know, like, the world just feels dead to me. And that's that's sad. That's a sad assessment. Uh, that it, it feels like a game. It doesn't feel like a universe. And that's not what... That's not what it should happen. Okay, uh, so... Uh, and I don't want to get into this because this game failed... Um, commercially, but Kingdoms of Amalur, if you guys want a good action RPG, I will heartily recommend that game. Kingdoms, I would say, failed uh, on, on certain levels, but one thing it did not fail at is its quest system, okay? I was actually invested in a lot of the quests. I was, the game was shaky at the start, you know what I mean? Like most action RPGs, it's like whatever. But, you know, like, all of the side quests, even though there were some fetch quests, I will say that, but the fetch quests were more of, oh my gosh, we have to go into this cave to um, that has this huge boss to complete this ritual of the elves, uh, you know what I mean, and you have to go in here and you're the first person that's not an elf that we're going to let uh, participate in this. Um, you know, and uh, something's gone wrong in the past, like, seven people that have gone undergone this right have not returned, uh, so I want you to go get that. And you have to go through the dungeon and uh, fight and get it. You know, so it's not like, go and give me my barley that's down the road. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like that. It's... What I'm saying is they give substance to what they're doing. And when you do quest the NPCs and the towns actually change their attitude to you, okay? And I, I don't want to get into this in general, but the combat in that game is just awesome, okay? Uh, so that's that was its criticism, is it was too easy to min-max it and become crazy good at everything, all right? Uh, so... You aren't locked, in Kingdoms of Ambler, you aren't locked into a certain mage, uh, heavy, um, tank, uh, you know, like, um, 
they they try to do away from the the trinity by saying or the trinity of mage ranger you know um warrior um but what they do instead is say you can be all of them uh which is an interesting answer uh I think Guild Wars did it a lot better, or Guild Wars 2 did it a lot better, but uh, Kingdoms of Amalur actually is the first game that I know of, in my experience, that said, we're going to do away with this trinity of either you're a ranger, either you're uh, a, you know, a mage, or a, you know, a warrior, let's just give the player the ability to do whatever and build their character however they want, um, and... You got to be really powerful, and the combat is really satisfying. Um, and I will say that I mean, if you want action combat, you know, pick up Kingdoms of Amalur. You can get like the whole thing. Let me just check Steam right now because that's what I have it on. Uh, but let's see how much this game costs that I'm recommending. And again, this is all live. Kingdoms. Oh, I write in Kingdoms of Amalur, and the first thing that pops up is Witcher 2. That's great. can't type with my mic cord in the way. Kingdoms. It is 20 bucks. Um, I'd recommend getting it on sale. I think I got it for uh, $4 uh, on one of the sales. And it always goes on sale uh, because uh, I believe, I, I don't think it's the company, but it's the, uh, the publisher maybe went bankrupt on it after uh so basically it's like one of the it was a game that was one of those savant type games where people um uh, that were like super good in the industry came together and there was like big names all around and it was a big game um and it was a critical success but for whatever reason it just didn't sell in the market and i'm not like trying to shield this game like i'm sponsored to do this no i'm saying like if you're finding, if you're in The Witcher Three and you think like, oh, I want these things, and the game's not letting me do that, I'm saying it's been done before, and you can find that in this experience. And that's this is what I compare it to when you say like, ooh, this is the best game ever. I I instantly go through the games, and there's good and bad things about the Kingdom of Amalur, just as well as The Witcher. But when you start saying things like this is the best game ever, and this is the best open world action RPG, I'm like, wait a second. You know what I mean? Um, I think this is an okay game, and I think this is, you know, I would still score Witcher 3 9 out of 10, okay? But there are definitely drawbacks to that game. Like, from what I've seen, I can tell that there are things that will annoy me if I, when and if I play that game. And I, you won't see the coverage here on the channel because I only cover family-friendly things. Uh, but this is a big enough topic that in gaming that I have to engage it. Uh, because people are saying, like, you're not gamer a gamer if you don't like The Witcher 3. I didn't like Witcher 1 and 2, but I still gave them a chance because I was told that I'm not a gamer or whatever. So, you know, like, I, I play games that I don't enjoy just so I can have that experience as a gamer, all right? Uh, and you might think I'm crazy, but when someone says, oh, this is the, my favorite game, I go out of my way to try and figure out why people like that game, okay, even if I don't, um, because I want to understand their perspective. That's what I think uh, I bring to the table is I try to understand people, all right, and that's that's one of the core things that I try to do is, you know, I hated Dark Souls. I 100% of Dark Souls because everyone's like, oh, Dark Souls is the best game ever. I said, no, it's unfair with clunky combat controls. And, you know, when you dodge, it takes three seconds to dodge. And when you shield, it takes two seconds to shield. And it's just a wait and repeat game. Um, and it takes no actual skill. It takes timing. And that's not skill. That's not, you just got to memorize patterns. A child can do that. I'm sorry, Dark Souls community. I don't find that, though, no, I'll say this. Dark Souls 2, that's skill, okay? Dark Souls 1... Like, it's just a time-a-thon, okay? 
I think the old Mega Mans take more skill than than Dark Souls. All right. So, and I mean like Mega Mans one through four. All right. Not not the new Mega Mans or well, I'll give you nine and ten or whatever the ones that came out for Virtual Console uh, recently. Um, I say recently like it's recently. No, it's like three years. But you get what I'm saying is the uh, Mega Man is, I think, is much more skill-based than, say, a Dark Souls that um, where your main mechanic is memorizing and blocking and waiting for an opportunity to strike. Just It just doesn't... Oh, boy, I got myself into lots of trouble, this this Hot Chocolate Chronicles. <laughs> but, you know, that's why we come and share to this. Uh, you know, tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. And um, tell me why I'm, you know, like, what your opinion is. Um, but, you know, I don't want to go on and, wait, you know, take you guys' time. Uh, because I need to get this video up. And I, you know, um, don't want to uh, have this go 30 minutes. Because if I get into, uh, like, Dark Souls and that type of thing and... Um, skill level and what that means in games i'll be here all day um but uh again uh thank you for watching and um let's share one last drink all right well thank you you can find me on twitter and uh all the all the social medias and um until we meet again stay on target